Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to our Sunday night house churches. We've uh, got another couple for you. Um, so tonight we are looking at the story of the resurrection and you know this idea that the disciples of Jesus, we, we know that Jesus is alive. We know he's working in the world today. And uh, so we're gonna look at that story. Why don't you pause this video, open your Bibles to Matthew 28 and read the first eight verses. So recently somebody asked me, why do you guys worship on Sunday instead of Saturday? I think that they had a Seventh-day Adventist friend or some someone kind of getting in their ear. And this was just over text message, so I wanted to keep my answer pretty brief. But I told her we worship on Sunday because that was the day Jesus rose from the dead. You know, every time we worship on Sunday, we are celebrating that Christ is risen, mm -hmm. that he's alive, that every single Sunday is a type of Easter. It's a, it's a resurrection day. Because as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, if Jesus isn't raised from the dead, we're the most pitiful people around. We are, we are foolish. We are, you know, kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. So tonight we're looking at these verses in which the disciples see that Jesus is alive again. And in order to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to affirm this truth. You know, historically, the church has, has put it this way. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Mm -hmm. So I want to just unpack these verses and then ask the question, you know, what difference does it make that Jesus is alive? So in Matthew's gospel, the two Marys go to the tomb first on Sunday morning, just as the sun is rising. I'm not sure what they were doing there. But when someone dies, we frequently like to see where they're buried. We want to know the final place that they will rest. And Jesus was not just anyone. He was their teacher. He was their friend. He was the most incredible person that they had ever met. And it was literally unbelievable that 36 hours ago he was killed on a cross. And then there was this earthquake, and the angels appeared. They were all very scattered. Kind of seemed random, all of the events that were happening surrounding the death of Jesus. So much so that Roman guards intended to protect the tomb even passed out. And the, these two Marys that are at the tomb, they're also afraid. But this angel greets them with this phrase that the Bible uses so often, 365 times in fact. Do not be afraid. Mm. He has risen, the angel mm. says. The three most transformative words in the English language. He has risen. Jesus is alive. He has conquered sin. He's conquered death. He's conquered hell. But the, the women, they don't get a theology lecture mm. at this point. They get news, an mm. announcement, a proclamation. Never forget that the gospel means good news. The angel says, sure, go into the tomb, see the place where Jesus lay, see the grave closed, but then move along, mm. run back, let everybody who loved Jesus know that he's alive and mm. that he's going to see you again. And, and on their sprint to tell the disciples, they see Jesus. They embrace him, they clasp his feet, they worship him. They have been forever changed. Them as well as the other disciples, the, di the disciples see the risen Christ is the name of this little talk. And just like them, we see evidence every day that Jesus is alive. We experience that grace regularly. When we look in the rearview mirror of our lives, we see his fingerprints all over the place. And not even in a sporadic or infrequent way. Disciples of Jesus know that his resurrection has made all the difference and that his Holy Spirit is with us throughout our lives, wherever we go and with whatever we do. So this has a huge impact on us. You know, I think every sinful pattern, every unhelpful line of thinking can be traced back to this, forgetting that mm -hmm. Jesus is alive. 
if Jesus is alive, and he is, then we have something that every single person in the world is looking for, hope. Mm. We have an eternal, everlasting hope. You know, for little situations in our life, for things that frustrate us or annoy us, for chapters of our life that are difficult for a variety of reasons, for seasons in our marriage that are challenging, we have hope that because Jesus is alive, mm-hmm. we are not stuck. Mm-hmm. Things can change. We can change. People can change. But what we really have is hope for life after death, mm-hmm. an eternal life that is reflected back into our current situations. My ultimate hope in this life is not in this world. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in Jesus. It's in his kingdom that is coming fully in the life to come. Yeah, C.S. Lewis said that in the life to come, every day will be better than the day before. Mm -hmm. Tolkien said that in the life to come, everything sad will come untrue. These are just glimpses into the Mm -hmm. amazing promises that we have in Christ. We know the end of the story, Mm -hmm. that Christ wins. We've seen him alive. And my prayer, my prayer, Park Lane Church, is that you will find this daily hope that just flows out of you, that the hope of Jesus, you know, risen, ascended, conquering, at the right hand of the Father, Jesus, that that hope will reign in your lives every day. Amen. Amen. So our spiritual practice for this week, we're going to be silent. (laughs) <laughs> which will be easier for some of us than others. We practice this discipline in order to learn to bridle our tongues. It's been practiced by monks and nuns for thousands of years. When we're silent, we cannot lie or gossip or hurt others with our words. So either take a day of silence, take a, take a period of silence, or, or take a period of time, a day without lying. Mm-hmm. So a day of, of silence will take some planning, but I'd encourage you to try it. You know, first, um, a couple things you gotta do. First, you gotta let others know that you're, that you're doing it. Uh, second, if you're asked to speak and it's beneficial, then speak. You know, charity overrides all discipline. If somebody's about to um, get hit by a bus, please shout at them and warn them. But third, you know, use hand gestures or written notes if you must. You know, you could keep a notepad around, but Mm -hmm. most people find this to be a wonderful experience to take a day of silence, maybe from a Friday night to a Saturday night. Don't be afraid of it. It's gonna make you more aware of your speech Mm -hmm. and of the people around you and how you use your words. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not practical to do that, you know, a lie-free day, doing your very best to not lie to anyone or even lie to yourself for a day if you do lie correct it on the spot simply say you know what i said was untrue the truth is dot 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 (laughs) and you may be afraid people will be upset with you but the opposite is true the truth is refreshing Mm -hmm. to all people so have a great week as you are a disciple who makes disciples thanks See ya.